VFX Graph has been around for a while and many of you have been requesting that I make a few tutorials with it. So I decided to recreate the first visual effects tutorial I made, this one, but this time with Unity VFX Graph. And I end up with this. But then I started playing around, make a few more variations and I end up creating some pretty cool orbs. But this is the one that I'm going to show you how you can do. The others are exclusively available on my Patreon page, the link's in the description in case you are interested. Alright, so let's see how we can create this bad boy. I'm using Universal Render Pipeline in Unity 2019.3.7 and the only thing we need to do before we proceed is to go up here to the Package Manager in Window and we need to scroll down until we get to Visual FX Graph. If you don't see it, go to Advanced and turn on Show Preview Packages. Once that is installed, make sure to also install Shader Graph. And the first thing we can do is go ahead and create, with right click, a visual effect graph. And we can drag it to the scene. And then press on edit, so we can open up the visual effects graph window. I'm gonna duck it here, and I'm gonna make some room, then turn off target game object, uh, we don't need it. And as you can see, we also have the blackboard where we can add variables. But what we want to do is first delete this, all of this, we don't need that. We want to press spacebar and search for trails. We are going to start with the trails. This one, the simple ads and trails. We get these cool standard trails. So as you can see up here we can control the rate, but we have a capacity that is basically capping our rate. So let's increase the capacity to around 1000. On the right we also have these strips, capacity that is set to 32 and we can change that to 1000 as well, or even more. Let's just add a float. Let's control this rate with a property that we can use in the inspector. We are going to call it trail spawn rate and it's going to be exposed so we can control it in the inspector with a default value of 30 and we can connect it here to the rate. Down here in the initialize particle, basically when the particle is spawned, we don't want to use set velocity so we can remove it and we can also remove the set color from a gradient. We want to use a single color, so let's press spacebar to search for set color. Alright, and we can also control this color in the inspector. So let's add another property, a color one, rename it, turn on expose it, and drag the property down here, and then we can select a color. I'm gonna choose a blue and increase a little bit the intensity. Alright, something like this. Now they are almost all spawning overlapped to each other, so let's fix that and let's search for a sphere. So they spawn in a sphere shape. And as you can see, if we open this up, we can control the radius of this sphere. And this is a value that's going to be useful to control in the inspector. So I'm going to add a float, name it size, for example. It's going to be exposed and the default value is going to be 1. With this size now we can multiply it and say, for example, that it's going to be multiplied by 1. So any value that we input in the size parameter, it's going to be multiplied by that 1. And it's going to be super useful in a moment you will see. Now what we can also do is have control over the trail's lifetime. So I'm going to add a float with a default value of 1 and expose it as well. And this one is going to be multiplied two times one for the minimum and another for the maximum. The minimum is going to be 1 and the maximum 3. Just like this. Which ends up being super useful in case we want to control the lifetime of the trails directly in the inspector. Now the cool trick comes when we go to the update particles. Basically, we have a turbulence here that keeps on moving the particles around 
with this motion. And what we want to do is actually conform them to a sphere, to a sphere shape. Basically, they try to fit inside that sphere. And if we increase the radius, we create a pretty cool effect, as you can see. So we are going to once again use the size, multiply it by 1.5 in this case, and connect it to the radius. And as you can see, they have an attraction force that is too high. So let's decrease that to around 10. And the stick force, which is the force at which it is trying to stick with the sphere shape, is a bit too high to reach it. Around 5 should be fine. Now for each particle, this is spawning a strip, basically a trail. And we don't want to set the lifetime here, we can inherit values directly from the particles. So let's inherit the lifetime. Cool, and let's skip the update particle, we are going to go back there in a moment. And let's go down here to the output particle strip quad. And as you can see, we don't have control over the size. So let's add a set size and disable the set size of a lifetime, we are going to use it in a moment. And once again, with the size parameter, we can go ahead and create two multiply nodes. One for the minimum, like 0.01, and the maximum 0.02. If we want, we can create a random number with spacebar, feed them the minimum and the maximum, disable constant, we don't want these values to be constant, and connect to the size. And they turn on to be super small. But that's because we have set size of a lifetime off. We want to turn it on. And up here in the inspector, the composition is not going to overwrite the size value, it's going to add. And we now make sure that the trails go from big to small throughout their lifetime. Now the cool thing here is that we can go ahead and select all of these nodes and with right click we can create a group selection. I'm gonna name these trails. Now for the next one, we want an empty particle system, because we can in fact create empty particle systems. And the first thing that the particle system needs, we can start by the spawn and we want to search for a burst, a periodic burst, something that is going to keep on emitting particles every x time. We can emit only one particle for this one, this is going to be the beam, by the way, with an interval of one second. Just going to create some space over here, and the particle also needs to know its lifetime. So that's when initialized particle comes in, and we can say it at the beginning that we want to set the lifetime to be two seconds. What a particle also needs is a texture, and for that we have this quad down here that we can fit a texture. I'm going to select the default particle, and as you can see, it's really tiny. So we can go ahead and control the size of this particle directly in this quad. And we can once again use the size and multiply it by, let's say, 10. Yeah. That's really big because we still don't have color. So let's add a set color and now let's reuse this color property up here. Drag it, connect it, and as you can see, it's really intense. And the cool thing is that we can divide these. Basically, we can divide the color, let's say four. And as you can see, it becomes really dull. But that's because we are using an alpha blend mode. Let's switch it to be in additive. Now that looks much better, but the particles appear and disappear out of nowhere. So let's control their alpha, the transparency, with an add color of a lifetime. And in this graph, we don't need these keys. Right here, we just need this first key to be, to be zero. And then add another key up here, which is going to be 100. And we can also add another key in the end without any alpha. And this fades in and fades out the particle, which looks much smoother. All right, cool. We can also group this and rename it to beam. 
Now for the last thing we need and the coolest one, we can search for simple and then choose simple particle system. And the first thing we want to do here is assign a texture. We can also assign the default particle and switch the blend mode to additive. And once again, we also want to make sure that this particle spawn in a sphere shape. So initialize particle, we are going to set their position to be in sphere mode. And once again, we can use the size to multiply it, let's say by two, that fits well. And for this set velocity, I'm actually going to set minus 0 0.5, which I'm going to copy and paste. And down here, the maximum is going to be 0 0.5. Oh, and let's not forget to increase the capacity to a big value like this one. And create a new float so we can have control over the spawn rate. Going to be exposed and with a default value of, uh, let's say, 5000 particles. And they are super bright because we need to control their size, they are too big. So let's add a set size down here. Disable the set size of a lifetime. And I'm going to use a random number between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02. And as you can see, they are really small. What we can also do is disable set color of a lifetime because we want to set a simple color and then reuse the color property. In the update particle, now we need to update the position of these particles. And for that, we are going to use a turbulence that will make them move in different directions. I'm just going to increase a bit the spawn rate to 50,000. This is what's going to melt your GPU. What we also need is to conform these particles to a sphere, once again. And we can control the radius of this sphere by using the size, multiply it by, let's say, 2. And as you can see, now the particles try to fit to the radius of that sphere. And the really cool thing comes now, we just need to make some room, because we are going to add a purling curl noise to D. With this node, we can create some really cool effects. For example, if I connect this to the conform to sphere, more specifically to the center, to the X and Y, you will notice that the sphere is being offset. And that's because we need to first get the position of the existing particles, so we can use it as a coordinate for the purling curl noise. But before that, we can add motion by using the time node, so they keep on moving. Then we can connect the X and Y to the coordinate of the purling curl noise and that's when we start getting some really cool effect. This motion of the particles is already looking pretty decent, but they are really scattered away, as you can see. And the way we fix that is by using a remap node. Basically, we are going to remap the old values that are between minus 3 and 3 to minus 1 and 1. And if I replace the connection now to the center, X and Y, of the sphere, what we get is a more concise motion for the particles. And if we increase the range of the remap of the old values, the particles get even more constrained. It seems like minus 6 and 6 is a good value, a good range, to create a nice motion. And we can also reuse this remap, reuse this purling curl noise to affect the field position of the turbulence. The difference is barely noticed, but if we start increasing the intensity and the drag to 5, we get this beautiful cluster of particles around the sphere, in a sphere-like shape. And the size comes really handy when, for example, we want this to be smaller, and this automatically adapts, as you can see, or we want this to be bigger. And if we increase the spawn rate, we get something really beautiful. 
Playing with visual effects graph is really entertaining and you can do a bunch of stuff. For example, now if we wanted, we could create a second color, something purple, and we could fit this color to the trails. And here we go, we have something super attractive with just two colors. We can also switch the second color to be yellow. I think it really blends in nicely. I mean, the possibilities are really immense with this. And I really hope that I've showed you a glimpse of how powerful this tool is and that you have enjoyed also this tutorial. As usual, all of these orbs are available on my Patreon page. And I want to say thank you to all my patrons. Your support really helps keep these videos coming. And a special thank you goes to the Super Mega Patrons, which are Adriano Bottega, Alejandro, FortHeroGames.com, Goblin Plague, Himerias PC, Josh McCormick, Ruan Mendiola, Ken Lee, Osgur Simsek, Solofo Razafimaelio, Stephen Melton, TK, and Artem Jim. Thank you all for your amazing support. It is very much appreciated and I hope you all have enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.